Hi everyone, I'm Jamie Vaughn with CCM Magazine and we're here with our newest junior reporter Bailey Aisling and we're interviewing today the wonderful Meredith Andrews from Word Entertainment. How are you Meredith? I'm good Jamie, how are you? I'm doing great. Now where are you during all of this quarantine? Well, I've, up until this point, I've been in Nashville, but a, a few days ago, I drove my kids to Dallas for a few days with their cousins, and now we're at my in-law's house in Louisiana. So we're having a little road trip, a little change of scenery. Um, just felt like we needed to get out of Nashville. It was getting a little bit colder. It was like going back into the 60s. I'm like, I need some warm weather where I can be outside in the sunshine, you know? So, um, and my sister-in-law has a pool, so that's a bonus, too. That's so we good. Know, yeah. How are your kids handling you being home all the time now? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, they 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 look at me every day and they're like, "You're still here?" No, we're just kidding. <laughs> um, they actually love it, and I it's been really sweet for all of us just to have some extra time together. Um, and it's gonna be it's definitely gonna be tricky once I start traveling again, just trying to navigate that transition back into you know traveling some on the weekends, and I might just have to bring them with me more often than I was before because I think we've just gotten used to being together all the time for better or worse you know it's been a lot of ups and downs but it's been really good too just to have some extra time together now are they homeschooled or they're they're grade school level though right yeah my oldest two are in third and first grade and then my daughter is um she'll be going into kindergarten next year so mm -hmm. but honestly you know this whole forced homeschooling situation that we've that's all been it's been thrust on all of us it's I've enjoyed it. And I mean, it's not been perfect by any stretch. And there have been days when we were like, let's just go outside and find leaves. You know, it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it is what you, what it needs to be for your family. And, and a lot of the homeschool moms that I've talked to that are friends of mine just said, you know, this isn't like normal homeschooling. This is crisis schooling. So give yourself some grace, give your kids some grace. It's a lot to take on. And it's also a lot to kind of process and grieve as well. You know, all the things that we had to miss because everything shut down. So there's a lot of emotions that we're dealing with and talking through, which has been really, really good and healing for all of us. Yeah. Are you enjoying Corona school as you call it? No. <laughs> no. Do you miss school? Yeah. You do. She's a yeah. social butterfly, so she has to have that interaction. So that's been a little difficult for her. Yeah, for but, sure. Do you guys have any pets? <clears throat> We have a French bulldog named Lola, and she is adorable, and she's gotten a lot of extra attention during quarantine because we've all been home. I think it threw her rhythm off for a little bit, too. She's like, why are you people all here, you know, all the time? Um, but she is very sweet, and we love Lola. She's like, she's my baby because I don't have any babies anymore, so sometimes I'll hold her like a baby, and she does this thing where um she because she's a french bulldog and her face is kind of smushed in when uh you when you love on her she'll like snort and it's kind of like the equivalent of a cat purring but it sounds like little a pig like snorting <laughs> but she's so sweet but there have been lots of talk there's been lots of talk of getting other pets during quarantine i think everybody's just bored and needs something else to do like my uh sister-in-law has a hamster and then we have friends that have a bearded dragon so those are in the running but i don't know i told my kids if we get another pet it is all it is all on you <laughs> I don't need another thing to take care of. So it will end up being all on you. you yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So during this time, how are you filling your time as an artist? Um, well, I've done a few videos, um, just for various, uh, people who've asked, you know, a couple of churches have asked if we would send them videos of, um, of us just kind of leading worship and so we've done some of that and then um i've done a couple instagram lives here and there um i've been writing I, well i've written probably three times during quarantine but um i've also kind of taken the time just to rest and um regroup a little bit and read and um you know i think that for each of us we go through different seasons where um you know, there will be a season of high output where we're spinning our wheels and it's a, it's a lot of, we're going from one thing to the next. And then there are other seasons where God asks us to pull back so that we can receive so that he can fill us up 
for the next season of output and fruitfulness, if that makes sense. And so I've just been trying, because I'm not good at resting. I love to be going and doing and um, all those things. I think it's been really good for me just to take time to rest and um, be with my family and actually get through a book. You know, I'm so good at starting books, but terrible at finishing books. But I actually finished one the other day. (laughs) It felt really good, you know, so yeah. So you have a new single out, A Million Saints, and you have yes. all these different versions of the song, which is, each one of them is so beautiful and unique in its own right. What was the thought process behind that? Yeah, well, so A Million Saints originally came out um, last March, so it's been out a whole year when I released my um, my EP that was a live worship EP, um, but I've been doing, we did this for a song called Faith and Wonder, where we released several different versions. And it's just to kind of give people a different flavor of the song, if you will, because some people would like more of an acoustic or they like the instrumental or they like the orchestral. And then I have a Spanish version as well. So it's just to kind of give the song more life and, um, and maybe certain people will like the different, different versions, you know, versus the live one. And just to kind of um, explore all the options for one song and yeah, just give it maybe a longer life. So you said there's a Spanish version of this one. And before we had talked that you're writing some more in Spanish, what's your process for that? So I don't actually write in Spanish, but I take the songs that I have written and uh, my friend Lucia Parker translates them into Spanish. I'm not fluent in Spanish, but I I speak a little bit and I've always dreamed about doing um, songs in Spanish. I grew up going on mission trips to Costa Rica, Guatemala, Dominican Republic, Peru, all these different places and would lead worship in Spanish, but just had never released anything. Um, until last year when we released faith and wonder first in Spanish and then a million saints. And then we've actually, I've recorded eight other songs in Spanish as well that will hopefully make a full album that we'll release um, sometime this summer. Oh, that's but it's so fun. I, I love doing songs in Spanish and um, I don't know, it uses a different part of my brain, but it's, it's so, it's so awesome just getting to connect with, Spanish speaking people and encourage them to, you know, people that I wouldn't necessarily have the chance to reach otherwise. So it's been really awesome. It is the fastest growing faith population in the world. So yeah. why not? Yeah. Why not yeah. do this as much as you can? Yeah. So you are one of my favorite songwriters. And oh, thank you. You're welcome. You are. What is your songwriting process? Well, it just depends. Um, I think. I mean, it can look different at, with every song. Um, sometimes it'll start as a phrase or just an inspiration in, um, you know, something that I'm walking through that I just feel like, uh, you know, maybe I'll get a phrase stuck in my head that just kind of helps me um, process and walk out what God is showing me and what he's revealing to me in that certain time. And um <clears throat> A lot of times those phrases will come, you know, when I'm washing dishes or when I'm in the shower or when I'm about to fall asleep and I don't really want to reach for my phone and write it down, but it's like, I have to, cause I don't want to forget, you know, cause I believe that God is speaking to me in those moments. But, um, also I haven't written a song by myself since probably, I don't know, maybe in 10 years or more, 12 years. Um, because I so enjoy the collaboration process. I love getting to write with other people, hear their perspectives and their experiences, get in a room with friends and just talk about what is God showing you? What is, what's going on in your heart right now? What are the things that you feel like God is saying and that we, that he wants us to say, you know, if we are his mouthpiece if, and if we are writing songs for the church in, in essence to sing, you know, what are the things that God is putting on our hearts? to put in the mouths of people to sing. Right. So, um, it's awesome. It's such a, it's such a humbling process. And there are days that I feel like, you know, I'm never going to write another song again (laughs) because you're just like, where is it going to come from? But always God is stirring and there's no limit to who he is or, um, what he's saying or what he can do. And so I think that when we're just willing to open ourselves up and dive 
deep into the well of his word and his presence, that there's so much to be found. There's so much content. There's so much more of him to be found. And um, so I found that even in the writing process, it becomes like an act of worship for me just to um, it kind of remember what God has said, remember who he is and what he's doing, what he's done, his faithfulness in the past, the fact that he'll be faithful to the end and, um, and recounting that in maybe a way that I've never heard before. So, um, it's fun, it's challenging. And, um, and I always want it to be an act of worship, just the process of it in and of itself. What's your favorite lyric that you have written? A favorite lyric. Oh goodness. You know, it's funny, whenever I sing my own songs, I have to have um, like a confidence monitor, monitor on the back wall so I don't forget my lyrics. <laughs> but let's see. That's a great question. And I'd have to think about it because I'd probably have to go back through all of my songs. Um, but there, I'll, I'll just say this one because it's a brand new song that I haven't released yet. And it's probably hopefully going to come out this summer. Um, but I wrote a song recently with um, two guys, Ryan Ellis and Andrew Bergtold, and it's a song called carry the world. And it's kind of talks about how, you know, I, I've tried to take the weight of the world on my shoulders when it was never mine to carry. Um, and in the second verse, it says, uh, you are peace and you are never worried. So I will choose to trust your heart is good. You are rest. You're never in a hurry. Uh, so I surrender all I have again. So it's just that thought of like God being rest, that he's not in a hurry because we, we're, I'm always in a hurry. I drive over the speed limit. I don't like to waste time. I'm usually late because I'm trying not to waste time. <laughs> you know, so I'm always in a hurry. And I think that this quarantine pace honestly has been so good for me just to kind of slow down find a new rhythm and understand that God is not in a hurry like that's a really great I know it sounds simple but it's a really great thought because if God's not in a hurry then why do I think that I should be mm -hmm. like he is so intentionally takes his time and his timing is so perfect and and I always say this too that peace is a person and his name is Jesus oh, you know God. we're not going to find peace um just by you know, like laying on the couch watching Netflix with a face mask on or whatever, <laughs> you know, it's like, um, we find peace in the middle of the storm because Jesus is our peace. Mm -hmm. And I think that in the craziness of the world, the things that are uncertain and chaotic, we can just rest in the fact that God is who he says he is and we can trust him. What lyric or song do you wish you had written? Oh, gracious. How so many? <laughs> um, I mean, I love right now. I'm just so loving. Um, I'm just so loving the blessing by Carrie and Cody and Elevation. And I mean, it's straight scripture what they're singing, but the the part where she starts going into, um, you know, may his favor be upon you and your family and your children and their children. I get chills every time, you know, just thinking about the generations and the favor of God on each generation. I think it's so powerful. It's again, it's simple, right? But it's so profound. Um, just those lyrics. And I think even just playing that in my house and praying it over my family and praying it over my children is just, is so powerful. When did you become a Christian? I became a Christian when I was five years old, so I was really young. I grew up going to church. Um, my parents were there pretty much every time the doors were open, and so I was too. And um, yeah, so I gave my heart to Jesus three weeks in a row, actually, when I was five, just to make sure. <laughs> I went forward three Sundays in a row every time the pastor would give an invitation, and finally my mom was like, you don't have to keep going forward every Sunday. Like, you're in, you know, like, um, so yeah. And I've been walking with the Lord ever since. And, um, and I'm just really, really grateful that God saved me when I was little and he's all I've ever known. And it doesn't mean that my life has been perfect or I've never made a mistake, you know, but it's, um, it's this journey with the Lord. It's this, like, I can look back over my life and remember even when I was young, even when I was your age and how God met me and spoke to me and, um, 
how old are you? 12. You're 12. So when I was 12 is when I really started seeking the Lord on my own. And I would come home from school a lot of days and I'd turn on my worship music in my room and I would just sing to the Lord and he would meet me like in such a beautiful, like tangible way. Like I could feel his presence and I couldn't get enough of him. And so that's where it all started for me. And it doesn't matter, you know, how old or how young we are. God you know, our, we always say at our church, there's no junior Holy Spirit. Like God wants to meet us right where we are and he wants to speak to us. And I'm just thankful. And, and I'll never forget the way that God met me as a 12 year old girl. Um, you know, when I still had a lot to figure out, but he was, he was so tender and so kind and still is, but it's just really sweet when, um, you have that to look back on your childhood and the way that God spoke to you and met you in those times. So as we end our conversation, I always yeah. give the artist the opportunity to leave our viewers with a message of hope. What would you like to say? Yeah, I think that's awesome. Thanks, Jamie. Um, wow. Well, I mean, I guess just speaking to our current climate and the current situation that we're in, I know that um, we've been through, you know, what is it, a couple months of lockdown and, um and people are calling it kind of a new normal. And, and uh, these are unsettling times and uncertain times. But I have felt the stirring in my spirit, even since the beginning, that God is doing. It's like a, It feels like a setup in a good way. Yeah. It feels like he's hitting the reset where it's a chance for us to regroup, to remember what matters, to come back to um, kind of our roots and our foundations and, um, and slow down and pull back and just listen and be intentional and be present in the moment and position ourselves to really hear from heaven, position ourselves to um, understand his heart for the world, because none of this has thrown him off. None of this has taken him by surprise. And we can trust God even in the crazy, uncertain times and know that he is still on his throne that he still has a plan. And I've been so encouraged by um, 2 Corinthians 4 and the end of that chapter, I think it's verse 16, where it talks about, you know, outwardly we are wasting away, but inwardly we are being renewed day by day. And so we fix our eyes uh Oh, and, and, um, and it's achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs everything else. And so we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but we fix our eyes on what is unseen. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been trying to do in all of this is, yeah, I know what the news is saying. Yeah. I know what, um, that there's a lot of fear and panic kind of swirling around. Yeah. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And when I tune into heaven and when I choose to fix my eyes on what is unseen, then I find my hope because my hope was never in what our country is doing, the political climate, the economical climate, anything else, public health. My hope was never in those things. My hope has always been in Jesus. And this is the time when it really matters, right? Yeah. When the rubber meets the road. And so, um, just I'll kind of close with this last um, thought and it's from Psalm 46. It says, um, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in time of trouble. Therefore we will not fear though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. It's like, we're not going to fear. We're not going to be afraid because we as the people of God have a confidence and a hope that is the anchor for our souls that will not disappoint us, that will not give way even when everything else gives way. And that's where we find our hope. And so um, just to everyone who's watching or listening, um, don't be afraid because the God of the universe is not only with you, but he's for you. He's also in you and he has a plan in all of this. And when we fix our eyes on what is unseen, the things that are, that are eternal, that's when we recognize that we come out victorious, no matter what the outcome is. Right. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Anytime. CCM would love to have you anytime you wanted to come uh -huh. by and talk to us. We would love it. So thank you so much for spending your morning with us. We greatly appreciate it. Of course. Thank you guys for asking me. It was so great to see you guys and to chat. I bet we could chat a lot longer, but 
Yeah. I hope you get to see your friends soon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, Meredith. You're so welcome. Thanks.